Right, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, it's Greg here again with uh, yet another kit review. I've been spending too much money. <coughs> it's the new Ming Panther, Panther Ausch Air Lead version with Zimmerit. But that's why it's got Zimmerit on the box, but I'll explain as we're going along. Nice box artwork, do you like it? Let me just see if I can get a better picture. Yeah, nice, nice picture. Nice artwork. Oop, I better not get that off before it starts interfering with things. Right, it's the uh, German medium tank Panther Ausch A lead version from Meng, and it's their uh, 135 Tyrannosaurus series. And the kit number is TS035, which is. There we go. There we go. As you can see, it's quite a deep looking box. So I think both ends of that are the same. And on this side, we have a little bit of information and a bit of kit info and a colour call out. It looks really tasty, that really does look really nice. I do like that. And on the other side, we have another colour call out and all the paints, AK paints. I don't really use AK paints for spraying, so I shall uh, be using Tamiya and uh, Vallejo paints. I can't get the uh, AK pens to work. The, well, not as good as the Tamiya ones anyhow. And there's another call call. Oh, that's nice as well, isn't it? Ooh. I do like that as well. So, without further ado, let's have a look what we've got inside this big, thick, chunky box. Right. I've actually opened the box because I've purchased I think it's about £12. I actually got the, uh, the Zimmerit for this kit. I think there's four different ones you can buy. I chose this one, which is number four, decal sheet number four. So, which is, you can't really see on this picture. It's got more. If you look at the pictures on there, you see. It's going one way and then the other, which I do like. I don't like that straight up and down. I like this one. So, me and it's actually me and Matt are going to build this. Matt, uh, from let me think, I remember his bloody web, his uh, thing page. Matt Hill, what's, what does he call himself? On his uh, Matt Hill scale of models. Yeah, from the down, the mad, the mad Tasmanian devil, as Simon calls him. So, it means. Me and Matt are going to do this as a group build. I think he's got the same uh, decal sheet as me as well, so it'll be pretty interesting to see the two interpretations of it. So that's it, that was separate, so that was 14, 12, 14, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but apparently, so I've been told that all pants, Panther late versions of the year all had Zimmerit, so you're going to have to buy Zimmerit. You, 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 uh, and we have I'll just move that box I have the way. And then we have colour callouts, which is really nice. There's one version there of the uh, number five three four fifth company, second battalion, fifth panzer regiment, SS Panzer Division Wing, Covell Voil, Ukraine, nineteen forty four. So that's one. one version. And this version we have the squiggly squigglies. Which is number 613, 6th Company, 2nd Battalion, 5 Panzer Regiment, SS Panzer Division, Viking, Cowell, Poland in 1944. So that's two versions. Uh, we have another version. I like these, they are quite nice, all these colour call outs. We have number 96, 3rd Panzer Regiment, 2nd Panzer Division. Wehrmacht, Normandy, France, 1944. And then this one again, there's another one, which is 2nd Battalion, 5th Panzer Regiment, SS Panzer Division, Viking, Summer 1944. So that's four. I think, and then we have a, a different strange version, that with the star on this one, isn't it? This is the uh, 503 Panther Tank Company under command of GDS uh, Lieutenant Stoikov, I can't pronounce that, Stoikov, 8th Guard 
Tanks Corps, Soviet Red Army, so obviously it's been a, uh, a one that's been captured and reused. Yeah, I've never known that. But the Russians are pinched one. I suppose we'll have done if they got all less pinched for T-34s. So that's another version. So we've got one we on the back of here. Have I got any more? I said all them ones. No, you've got the other one there, the middle one. Let's get that blur out the way. Nice colour call out again. Which is the number 113, 1st Battalion, 35th Panzer Regiment, 4th Panzer Division, Wehrmacht Eastern Front. Autumn 1944. So you've got quite a quite a good uh, choice. I should say it's a very nice choice, you know, depending on what you fancy, I suppose. And then we have the destructions, which is quite a nice in booklet form. Obviously all in Japanese at the front. Uh, same picture that's on the on the artwork, excuse me. And then we have a bit of information from there to there, which is worth a read. Um, it's all in Russian and German and whatever. Obviously what tools you're going to need and things like that. And the glues and do's and don'ts. The usual sort of stuff. And there's normally we start off with the assembly of the wheels. It's fairly simple. And we have the polycaps in the wheels as well, which is good. And then we start the assembly of the main hull. So the low hull, and then put the rear on, a few hatches, uh, underneath scape hatches and some of the transmission um, hub and the idler wheel connection. And then we start putting on the uh, suspension arms. So fairly straightforward, nothing any different towards anything else. Apart from this side, which one is it? I can't remember. Oh, that's the thought, so that's, not, that's just me thinking out loud. And then all the wheels to be things which I don't, I won't be doing any of that side apart from not, I won't be doing the jack, I won't be doing any of the small bits until near a time. Probably put this little piece on this engine hatch at the bottom. Uh, and then obviously you have the rear plate with the exhaust and the fuel drums, all that kind of, they'll go on. Tracks, they won't go on at that stage. They will be left towards the end as their uh, a job in themselves and then we're starting on the upper hull and the um see me i'll show you as we're going along uh paul that would be doing all this yeah 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 and all that um and this is the yeah this goes underneath this is the fans from underneath that you see looking down onto from underneath and then we're putting all the uh attachments on for the uh side skirt Giving you all the directions what to put them in and drill holes in whatever part of the you have to drill the holes. Obviously, there's different variants with different things on, and then we obviously do the front uh, machine gun ball. Fitting will do all that. Uh, all machine gun plug install, blah blah blah. More stuff on the on the upper hole, upper hole again. All straightforward. And then we put in the PE and for the engine grills and covers and things like that. And then we attach the low hull to the, to the main hull. A few little bits and pieces like shackles and the front mug guards and little plates on the back under the uh, under the uh, fuel drums. And then we're starting off here, I think this is the pipe cleaner for the uh, yeah, cleaning rods to go in. And a few ammo uh, boxes and again some more little bits and pieces for the uh, top of the hull tools and accessories should be go they won't go on at that point either I like to do them at the end painted separately put on at the end so let's see where we are Quite a few steps 20 12 must be nearly close to 30 steps and obviously we're still putting on more of the um, tools, some of the things I won't be say I won't put on until near the end. And then we have the obligatory uh, buckets which we have on German tanks. We have two different versions. Uh, water bucket and water bucket A or B depending on what version you're doing. Uh, you know, fuel drums, more ammo crate, the, the, obviously the uh, cleaning rods. Uh, an attachment at the back and then we start off with the, side of the skirt. It attaches to the uh, 
the points on there so they've got to be attached and then we've got tow ropes and this gives you a trench uh, a trenching block block for going over trenches so it's going to be put together and built and weathered and made look like wood and another long pole as well another long pole of wood which is unusual never seen them on panthers before but uh, quite nice and then obviously into the little gritty bits of the hatches um, starting off with the upper hull, upper hull. It, it, it'll explain itself when you see the parts because it's slightly different to a normal kit I won't say any more than that and obviously we're still you know, attaching the um, doing the upper hull and the various two mantlets and the gun, which and um, the mantlet, the, sorry, the um, gone out of my head at the very end of the gun, <laughs> I think. And then we start into the machine gun accessory for the uh, commander's cupola, which looks quite nice. You know, then we got the rack of the um, the bullets, uh, basket for all these loose cells. It's quite nice, I do like that. And next, we have um, Commander's Cupola built up, and then we're attaching the, the gun to the uh, upper turret and the cupola together, and then everything else, the um, all the tracks on the sides. Just excuse me one second, chaps. Sorry about that. Uh, yes, yeah, so we're carrying on with the, uh, the, the fitting together the turret and the uh, commander's cupola with the machine gun. Uh, the so it's all done. They're fitting with the tracks as extra protection and there was spare wheel. And then, excuse me, <coughs> we uh, fitting the uh, turret to the low hole. And that's the build complete. I didn't say about the tracks. Did I miss that one? I just skipped over it, didn't I? If I remember rightly. Let me go back to that. Yeah, because I forgot to say that tracks is individual links and they give you a uh, form for the, uh, the sag on it as well, which is quite good. So, which is good assembling each track. So, we have a install the F25 ice cleats as per your. Let's pay your need. Oh, I don't know what that, that means. Yeah, so they're individual tracks. The guide ons are put on separately, and as I say, there's that former to um, give you the sag from the from the uh, from the sprocket to the first way, which is nice. It's just a matter of bit and clean up and things. So that's the end of the instructions. It's fairly straightforward and nicely nicely laid out. So the first sprue we have is the tracks so this isn't to me so I'll have to cut them if I can find my knife which always seems to disappear when I want it there we go so there's one two three sprues of this tracks of the tracks so, we'll start off with the first one uh, you can see all the guide I'll put my hand behind so all the guide arms are individual and they're all hollow guide which is nice and then we have all the little attachments again for everything and then we have the detail on the actual let's see if I can get them detailed to show you the detail on the on the reverse that's quite that's already on the inside it's quite nice you see where the holes are for the uh, for the guide horns and on the rear we have quite really nice detail on the trucks themselves as you can see, really nice, nice ice cleats, really well detailed. I say there's a bit of clean up to be done. There's one, two, three, four, six points to clean up. That shouldn't be too bad. It's just one of these things you can do while you're watching TV or do a few a night or something like that. And then all the, uh, it's only there's one contact on the, uh, the guide horns. So that's quite nice. So. Nice tracks, nice tracks. I must say, they'll take a bit of time to do, but it's not a race. So it's a challenge, as they say. And then the next screw we have okay, what the wheels. Oops, I missed that one now. 
steaming. I really must change the blade. We have two identical sprues again. It is that uh, nice iron oxide colour again, same as the, uh, the King Tiger was. And the detail again is superb. Even for the wheels, all the little rivets and the bolt heads. Really nice detail. These are the parts that I was on about, and the instructions are going from underneath for the fan. Which are nice again. And then we have a bit of lovely texture on the uh, exhaust. You can see the texture. Really nice texture. I think it's very similar to the rolled steel that was on the, the King Tiger that I uh, did the kit review a couple of weeks ago. And we have a lot of, I don't know what the little pieces are, but I'm sure we'll find out. But it's all nicely detailed. Yeah, we have the, it's even on the rear of the uh, wheels, nicely detailed again. The sprocket. There we are. There we are. Let's get the sprocket into it. There we go. There's the sprocket. Two part sprocket and there's the engine uh, covers, grill covers again. And that looks like that's the idler. There we are at the back, which is nicely detailed again. It's even got the cast texture onto the uh, onto the idler as well. Really nicely done. And then obviously we have uh, next suspension arms, which are, apparently you can buy a, uh, a workable. A workable track with suspension with, uh, with the um, torsion bars for this kit, and if you, if, if you wanted it, I suppose, if you wanted it to be movable, say, but I use it, my mind's just going to be static, so I'm quite happy with the tracks what I've got. And I think also with this kit, you can buy a, a kit part for the uh, to, for the interior for the interior. You can go through this kit as well. So let's have a look at this one. There's only the one screw in here. It's a mixture of wheels and cat jerry cans and the rear, so the front precious plate and, and everything else. Wow. Again, it's a shame it has to be covered. Look at the texture on that. What a shame it has to be covered. Well, it doesn't have to be, but that is fantastic. That's, I would say that's even better than the Tiger. King Tiger, that is superb. That like really, really I'm impressed with that. And then we have the uh, that's the uh, the log that you make up in a four or five parts. It's got a nice detailed wood effect again. And the long, the long one as well. But I'll probably just use a stick from the garden. I would think. I never know. I'll see what it comes up like. And there's the other part of the exhaust again. The texture and there's the end of the uh, the two ends for the uh, the trench uh, the, you know for the wood to go for the trenches and things like that trenching block even the detail all this texture even on the mantlets there's two mantlets there and look at the texture on that as well that's superb really is and I think these wheels here are for the turret the spare wheel so there's a few jerry cans there uh, little bits and pieces. Jack again, all nicely detailed. Again, I'm very, very impressed with that texture on there. Wow, that is uh, superb! Right, so the next one this is all this, this will be sort of self explanatory. When uh, oops, let's move out of there for a spill. What I was on about, we've been a, uh, a kit for adding to the uh, Interior. So we have poly caps, obviously for all the wheels. Self-explanatory with them. And then if you look at the the, the up, up hull along the sides, there's nothing on the sides. Obviously, this is to see the detail inside the tank when you build it. If you wanted the full interior, but even then, the texture on this again. Look at the texture on on the top. Again, it's just superb. Really, really nice. Again, nice. And there we have the. Uh, that's the rear, which is quite nice. Again, so that most of that will be covered with zimmerite. Uh, they have the there the side skirts. No, I think that's something to do with the inside for the inside of the tank. Again, um, I think they have run along the insides. 
or is it? I don't have to check that myself. Not too sure. There's a couple of arches, small little bits and pieces, a couple of grab handles. As you see, you know, it's a nice looking kit again, isn't it? it really is. You know, certainly worth. I think I paid. I think it was twenty nine pounds uh, off eBay for a certain. I use a certain. Um, I think they're called Dawn Grocery or something like that on eBay. And they do all sorts of things, uh, as well as models and things like that. You can get a real good cheap deal. And they usually even in 10 to 14 days from China or Japan, one of the two. So there's not a lot of great, great waiting time. So let's get this other screw out. It wants to come out. Well, it's come out of the bugger. Ah, there we are, it's caught on that. Right, here we have the, excuse me, the low hole. And then the outer hole again, so the uh, the outer hole for the uh, it's not a bathtub, obviously it's built up, but there's the uh, quite nicely detailed again. And then we have now this is where I was on these to go inside these these bottom bar these go inside in here, and if you look inside them, right there. Can see if you know, I can get them to see. You can't quite see. There's a little. Yeah, you can just see the little pegs inside for the uh, suspension bars, so they won't go in any other direction. So there's. <coughs> never mind the. Um, all the injection mask because you well, these are all the inside, so you won't see them. This goes against the. Uh, these go against the outer hull. Sorry, <coughs> these. But inside, so you're never going to see them in here. So these go on. The reverse side of this, we go in this side along here. So we have the couple of there's a the transmission, first transmission block, the detail again, the casting again, superb. And then we have one of the uh, fuel drums, some of the little bits and pieces. So nice, nice. I do like the texture on this tank. I really do. Uh, then. There's another one here, which we have stuck there. The this is the form that I was on about for the wheel, so for the worst for the tracks. So it's quite nice to do, you know, for you something to use. And these are the uh, things so you don't get no bleed of light under these go into the top of the hull, the, the lower hull. The I can't, I can't remember what they're called now, so you don't see any light bleeding through. Nice details again, so small hatches and the little bits of the shovel, the uh, wire bolt cutters, the track holders, all nicely detailed again, the hammer, that's what we have, I need a better one, there we are, where's the hammer got nice, we got the hammer, the starting handle, the pipe, the pipe cleaner, the um, gun cleaning rods for the container for for them. All nicely detailed again. I can't so, sorry, I can't remember what them pieces are called. That last week it stops the bleed of light coming through the from the underneath. All the little bits and pieces again. All nicely detailed. There's the front wood guards. Some more of the tools. So all nicely detailed again. Yeah, very nice indeed. Very nice. Uh, and the last is the is the, uh, the last main so is the turret. And as you can see, once I get it out of the bag, what I was saying about leaving it if you have the interior. So there's the that's the turret. As you can see there's nothing there, it's just holes everywhere. And that bit will come out as well. That's not part of it, I don't think it is. So you see, you have to build the you have to basically build the turret. So we've got two mantlets. Again, the texture is superb. I don't know what the real difference is on that. I'll have to check them out when I build it, obviously. And then we have the uh, of the cupola and the bottom of the turret. We have the turret turret roof which is nice again, nice detail again and nice texture again 
and then the commander's cupola with the detail again on that's so all this cast of rolled steel effect on it superb really is nice and then we have a few hatches again and then the we have a one piece slide molded barrel as well which I won't be using why you say that because it's a metal barrel would it of course well so I'll be using the metal barrel I still have a nice uh, slide molded barrel in the, in my spares box you never know you never know so I do have a panther I think it's a panther G I think it's a two piece barrel so I probably could use that I'll have to check see if it's the same sort of thing which being panther late panther A so it might not be but we shall see so that's the last of the, the last of the uh, the sprues and then we get into the little bits and pieces the extras so there's the uh, metal barrel that you get with it and I, I didn't show you but the actual uh, metal at the end is, is slide moulded as well so that's fine it's really nice and then we have in here we have so I'll get this. I'll use this one for all oh, the clear part for the lens it's for the uh, periscopes and all that quite nice I'll have to look into them and see what colours I've got I've got some clear colours to put onto those to see what the instructions say and then here we have a rippy bag or oh, slide out of it oh, yeah. not a seal bag so it's good quite heavy this piece in here we have a, num a number of things I'll just slip them all out Let's start with. We have a first. We have the, the wire for the uh, the tow rod for the the tow tow cable. We have the decal sheet, which I never get out. We've got quite a few options there, a lot of numbers, and no point in getting them out. They look quite nice. Well, that's what you know, that's not no harm, is there? Yeah, as well, it seems have gone this far. No point. Yeah, as you can see, the white and there's a couple of German cross, and there's all obviously the uh, decals for all them versions, the Russian one as well. So the tech is really smooth, and you can see hardly any carrier film at all around the actual decals themselves. Superb. So they should go down really, really nicely. And then we have a photo wedge with the grills and a, I think that's the commander's aerial for the tank if he wanted to do that one. Um, with a chain there for other bits and pieces. Obviously the, the uh, covers for the uh, air intakes and things like that. Or outtakes or whatever you want to call them. Other little bits and pieces. It's nice that it's coated in uh, clear telephone as well so it's uh, nicely protected and good when you're taking it out so it doesn't jump everywhere and it's really thin really nice really nice texture and texture really nice and thin and these are the side skirts which are metal as well so you can easily twist and battle damage them easily so it'll look quite nice one that we've done so they're nice and thin as well you know kept into uh, the scale so that'll be interesting to do just come on that block there the uh, really nice quite impressed with them so so that's about it with this kit so it looks a really nice story kit uh, looking forward to the build with Matt eventually sometime shortly we'll uh, start we'll, I've got a few things to finish off plus still I'm doing the uh, the Leopold and Matt's got a few things he needs to finish first um, so I don't know when we're quite going to go ahead with this but I will be so uh, I think about that's about it and so I'd like you to say thank you for taking your time out of your day to uh, watch this kit review or unboxing whatever you want to call it I thank all my subscribers um, I do appreciate you I really do, I really do appreciate all my subscribers and they get some nice and lovely comments and positive comments and helpful comments as well from a certain few people that uh, really do. I think there's one called, I think his lad's called Ennis, I can't remember the, uh, I think it's his username. Uh, he's so knowledgeable about the little Japanese uh, types of type 
uh, what is it? The Type 97 Chai are full of information to help, so I'm going to take a lot of it on board. So thank you very much for that. If I remember, I'll leave his uh, his link in the uh, in the descriptions. So yeah, I really do appreciate all my subscribers. I really do positive. I get some positive feedback, which uh, which is uh, which is nice. So I think that's about it. So we'll catch you again soon with either an update of the what I'm doing with the Leopold or the little Type 97 Chiha. So this is Greg signing off and we'll catch you soon.